Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kuchera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kuchera. Welcome in. Good afternoon. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. <clears throat> Just a different, uh, couple different ways to listen and follow the show before I jump into the topic today. The topic, by the way, is uh, my predictions, my personal predictions for real estate and mortgage for 2018. So hold your breath, get ready to go. And I'm going to go through those just in a couple of minutes. Just uh, before we get started, a couple of reminders. You can listen to us uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, from 3 to 4 Pacific Daylight Time, KDOW 1220 AM. And uh, you could also listen to us live online. If uh, you don't have a radio or you're somewhere outside of the listening area, you could go to kdow.biz. Just click on the button that says Listen Live, and you can listen to the show during this time period um, anywhere in the world, as long as it is this time period. Also, normally we're streaming live on Facebook, but we are not doing that today because of some uh, little difficulties here anyway. So um, normally you could pick us up on Facebook on a regular basis. We're there streaming live every single day, 3 to 4, but as we do that today, we are not. And then lastly, be sure to download the podcast you could do that by going to iTunes and just typing in Real Estate Radio Live, or you could go to our website, <clears throat> reradiolive.com, and uh, get the podcast that way. A couple of new, uh, a couple of announcements I'm super, super excited about for 2018. We're going to bring in uh, two different partners affiliated with Real Estate Radio Live. One of them is going to be Charlie Castro. He is with Buy Right Properties. He'll be uh, with us every single Monday. And it will be Investors Monday, Investing on Monday. Every single Monday starting January 8th, Charlie Castro will be with us talking about investment opportunities in real estate, specifically outside of the California area. Stay tuned for that. Also, uh, probably by late January, we will have Legal Fridays. That's right, Legal Fridays. We are going to have an attorney on the show every single Friday. And uh, he is a business attorney, uh, patent attorney, intellectual property attorney, overall uh, very, very knowledgeable, obviously, in a lot of legal background. But excited because it's not only going to be related to real estate, it's going to be related to the Silicon Valley, a lot of things going on, startup companies, venture capital, entrepreneurship. Uh, He'll come in from a legal perspective and... uh, Really look forward to having that kick off later in January, and that will be on Friday. So we have Legal Fridays coming to you in 2018. All right, lastly, if you have any questions during the show today, 1-800-516-1220. 1-800-516-1220 if you have any questions for me during the show. All right, so these are my predictions, mortgage, real estate and mortgage predictions for 2018. And most of you know, or maybe you don't, if you're just tuning into the show, for nearly eight years, um, we have provided education and information to the consumer. So what that means is I'm passionate and uh, determined. Every single day I do research in this industry, whether it be real estate, financing, what the industry holds, how it's moving, what the future holds, um, some of the things that are going well, some of the things are not going well. In general, uh, I am studying researching this every single day. So... Um, there's a lot of good information and feedback that I hope that you're um, realizing out there, and I do get a lot of feedback from people that say they do, so I so, uh, appreciate that. Well, let's start on the real estate side. Some predictions um, for 2018 on the real estate side, and I'll bounce around a little bit on, <clears throat> excuse me, on this specifically focused on the Bay Area I'm going to talk mostly about. I'll do some national generalities here, but typically the Bay Area. So most won't surprise, this one won't surprise most people, but I do think we're going to have some continued low inventory. I don't know that, I just don't think that's going to change much. When you look at all the factors, 
you look at the job market, um, lack of places to build, only upward. There will be a lot of a lot of growth in two specific areas in the Bay Area. The majority of the <clears throat> excuse me, the majority of the growth that's going to be taking place in the Bay Area is going to be mostly vertical, and you're going to see that growth near Levi Stadium in the Santa Clara area. They're going to be um, building on Santa Clara Golf Course, which I'm not sure if they took that out of play or not yet. And then downtown San Jose, you're going to see a lot of growth there in the next couple of years as well. So that's that's where going to, the activity, that's where the activity is going to be on a large scale in the Bay Area. It will be Santa Clara area around Levi Stadium, and then uh, downtown San Jose. You're going to have some uh, <clears throat> you're going to have some growth there too. So overall, the inventory I think is going to stay fairly low. I do think it'll come up, and we're not going to be as strangled as we were this year with inventory. I do think we're going to have some additional inventory come February, March. And uh, it will be more overall, I believe, than we had in uh, overall in 2017, but it's not going to be gangbusters. I still think the inventory <clears throat> is, going to be, is going to be somewhat low. The other thing that's going to change a little bit, it'll be interesting how this plays out. So in the new tax bill, there are some provisions if you have a corporation with pass-throughs and there's some benefits to having a corporation and most of you know. So you might see um, you might see real estate owners uh, a fair amount and this is really not going to affect anybody per se in the market as much as it is going to affect property owners. What I mean by that is if you're out there listening to the show or you're listening to this podcast and you are a property owner and you own multiple properties, if you have not um, formed a LLC or a corporation maybe to hold those properties in, you might think about doing that now because of some of the tax benefits. I can't speak spe specifically to them because I am not a CPA or a tax expert, but I do think when you dig in, um, some property owners that own multiple properties might find it beneficial to, um, to change the holding, to change the status. In other words, you might... Um, file and, uh, you know, have an LLC, or you might have a corporation where you hold these properties. And I think that there will be a lot of people entertaining this in 2018 and moving forward. Again, that will be people entertaining and looking at the thought about maybe forming an LLC or a corporation with specific interest into holding properties there because of the tax benefits now from a corporation. So you might see some of that activity pick up quite a bit. As I mentioned, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a CPA on a couple of CPAs on over the next couple of weeks. So right after the first of the year, so hopefully we get more feedback on this uh, on this as well. All right, so low inventory. I think we're going to see some people have some different holdings with uh, LLCs and corporations to take advantage of some properties with those taxes and the new tax bill. Um, the other thing I mentioned a few weeks ago, I'll continue to mention. I do think the real estate industry, and so the mortgage, I'll get to the mortgage in a few minutes, but I, I do believe that the real estate industry is going to go through a bit of some consolidation and downsizing in the next year or so. There's just not enough activity and there's not enough transactions for the amount of real estate agents and real estate companies that are out there right now. There just isn't. And when I say that, that's primarily in the Bay Area, where you see a ton of growth in some of these other states, just so I'm clear. Um, I'm talking about the Bay Area is is what I'm specifically talking about right now where I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be consolidation throughout the United States in the real estate market, but I think it's going to be accelerated. I think it's going to be more pronounced here in the Bay Area. I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. There's a company called Compass that has uh, over $500 million invested and raised in the last couple of months. And they are primed to basically buy market. That's what they're going to do. They're going to buy market. So keep an eye, keep an ear out for that name, Compass Real Estate. You're going to see um, them with a lot of horsepower. And they're going to be buying uh, real estate companies. The way, you, the way you take market share in any business or industry is a couple different ways, right? You could grow organically. You could have mergers and acquisitions or... If you really want to go fast and you have some ambitions to 
accelerate your growth, the way you do that is just you buy, you buy, buy, buy. You and so what's going to happen is, to give you an idea, Compass as a real estate company has made a statement that they want twenty percent. They want to have owned basically twenty percent of the all a lot of the um, the higher end and most desirable markets in the United States and the, the San Francisco Bay Area is mark one of those seven. And so they're they're saying that we want twenty percent of the Bay Area market in terms of real estate agents and some you know by twenty twenty, three years from now. In order to do that, you can't do that organically. You just can't. So what's going to happen if they're going to meet those goals? They're going to be buying real estate companies, and they're going to have to pay a premium for them. And real estate companies know that. So a lot of the boutiques, um, and I'll name some names as we come after the first of the year. I think there's some specific targets in the real estate industry in here in the Bay Area um, that will be um, – this will be attractive for both sides. Honestly, it'll be attractive for Compass because they want they want uh, market space, and it's going to be attractive because the others are going to be getting to pay to premium. So, all right, I'm going to take a break. When I come back, we're going to continue talking about my predictions for 2018. We're going to continue talking about the real estate side, some of my predictions for 2018, and then segments three and four. I'm going to jump in and talk about the mortgage predictions and what we expect from the mortgage side of it. If you have any questions, give me a call. 1-800-516-1220. I'll be back with you in just a couple minutes. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachera with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending and title. That's right, we'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending, and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Joe Cachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Uh, the topic today are my predictions for the uh, real estate and mortgage industry in 2018. I am rolling through those. If you have any questions or predictions you're, uh, of your own, love to hear from you. 1-800-516-1220. 1-800-516-1220. If you have any thoughts, predictions yourself, questions, uh, anything at all, love to hear from you. Always do. Give me a call, 1-800-516-1220. So back to real estate predictions. As I was wrapping up uh, segment one, I was just commenting that there's going to be more consolidation, specifically in the Barry and the real estate market. I uh, keep an eye and ears out for a company called Compass that will be acquiring, acquiring companies. You'll see that name more and more in the next couple of years. And they have a lot of money. And so what's going to happen is when you have a lot of money and you – have a goal and objective to take X amount of market share in a certain amount of time, guess what? You're going to pay a premium. So here's what's going to happen. Um, The checkbooks are going to be open. And in some cases, real estate companies don't really need to sell, but they're going to have offers that probably are going to be too good to, to, uh, to resist or walk away from, honestly. I mean, if someone's paying a 20, 30, 40% premium for a company, you know, if a real estate company, they're hard, by the way, they're hard to, really hard to value because there's no, 
I mean, think about a real estate company like a mortgage company. You just have a bunch of people doing transactions. So how do you value it? Well, you know, there's revenue. And there's X amount of revenue, and you have a certain amount of revenue and overheads and expenses and net profits and all that. So there's a basis for it. My point is, is that at any given moment, um, you know, you could have a real estate company with 100 real estate agents, and 50 or 60 of them can walk out the door the next day. There's nothing holding them there. So it's an interesting, tricky business. So you will have uh, this company paying a premium, and I can't blame some of the real estate companies for selling if, uh, if the opportunity is right. And I, and I think it's going to happen. So keep an eye on that for more consolidation. There's not enough transactions to go around right now, and that's, gonna, that's not going to change very much. This inventory is going to stay fairly low. And uh, by the way, speaking of that too, another prediction is for those people that might be st sitting on the sideline thinking, you know, I'm going to wait this thing out. I'm going to wait until the market levels or drops. I'd say don't do it. If you go back and listen to my podcast, you could go back. I'm telling you several years ago, I was telling people to either wait or accelerate or jump back in. There are times when I will be very specific about my um, opinions and what you should do. And what I'm saying is if you want to get into this real estate market, don't wait because it's not going to get any better next year. It's not going to get any better the next year after. I do. Th I think we're on a. Yeah, I think we're, we could be on a, at least a two to three, maybe four year run, before we see any kind of potential leveling, or reset. You know, rescission in some in some cases. I just I don't see it because of what's going on. So, if you are in the market or thinking about buying, I would do it sooner than later. I would bite the bullet. Please don't. I mean, you know, it's anybody's guess, but I remember I study this stuff every single day and research this stuff every single day. Habits, predictions, data. And if you're going to buy, buy as soon as you can for a number of different reasons. One, it's not going to get cheaper. And two, interest rates are going up. And I'm going to talk about that in a couple of segments as well. Interest rates are going up. They just are. And then I'm, I'm not saying they're going to, you know, go through the roof, but they're going to go up. So if you're going to buy, get out there, get approved, and buy. The other thing that's happening that's not so much, well, it is a prediction, but you're going to see more and more, ladies and gentlemen. Stick with me here. See if you could. So what's happening is consumers are being educated on an accelerated pace. Consumers are being educated on an accelerated pace. What does that mean? Every single day, there is information and data that consumers have available to them at their fingertips. They read it. They study it. They apprehend. They understand. They are being educated at an accelerated pace, smarter, understanding, more educated, better questions they're asking. What does this mean? Why do I say this? Here's why I say this. We have an industry that's going the other way. If you could, if you could picture this, this, this hill, right? Consumers are climbing up the hill, learning, growing, on their way to the top, and our industry is on their way down because they haven't made a decision to invest in the right things or do, do the things they're supposed to do to get themselves positioned for the future in real estate and mortgage. We haven't. We're terrible. Our industry has a D- minus at best at that. No use of technology, very little use of technology. Same old systems. Here's what's funny. <laughs> How long did it take to, 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 on average, to close a transaction 20 years ago in the mortgage and real estate business? 30 days. How long does it take today? 30 days. Wow. Look at that. Now, some people might jump in and go, hey, Joe, you know, I could get these things done in 14 days. I do it. All over. I understand. I can too. We could close loans in nine or 10 days if we have to. I, I understand that. But I'm saying, on average, you still have roughly, on average, that the 30-day close. There's not any. There's nothing changing, and the industry is going to suffer from this several years from now. Right now, they still, they still don't think it's going to affect them. But I'm telling you, the consumers are on an accelerated pace of education, information, and they. What here's what happens, ladies and gentlemen. As consumers get even more smart and wise about an industry or a, um, 
a product or service, in this case, we're talking about mortgage and real estate, guess what? Now when they walk up to you or sit, sit at the desk or get you on the telephone or text you or contact you, you have a more wise, intelligent consumer. So if you're in the industry and you're listening to this show, get your head out of the sand and educate yourself and try to keep pace with the consumer because most of us aren't. What does that mean? You better align yourself with a company that is investing in technology, systems, and processes that is designed to improve customer care and the process and the system in which you navigate in our business. We are slow to adapt, and it's, and it's going to come back to haunt us. It already is. There are, there's roughly $400 million invested to disrupt this industry in 2017. And my guess is that'll accelerate next year and it's not going to slow down. And here's the reason. There's opportunity to change. And you'll hear me talk about this a lot because I'm a believer in the future. And I almost also a believer that we should invest our time resources into the future understand where we are now and understand the past and how that takes us. But so what we have, my prediction again, is because you have an accelerated learning curve for the consumer and our industry is going in reverse, seriously, <laughs> the consumer is in a Ferrari going down the road and, and we're in this jalopy old, you know, 1960 Buick station wagon moving backwards. What does that equate to? I'll tell you what it equates to. When the consumer is face-to-face -face with you or on the phone with you or transaction with you, guess what? They're going to have more demands. They're going to expect better service. And guess what? This is, going to be, this is going to be a constant pressure on commissions and fees that we charge in our industry. That's the other thing that's coming, and it's going to happen. It's already starting to happen and will continue because consumers know what they could ask for. All right, I'm going to take another break. When we come back, I'm going to finish up the predictions on the real estate side. Then I am going to roll into the predictions on the mortgage side. If you have any questions, give me your thoughts. 1-800-516-1220. 1-800-516-1220. This is Joe Cochera with Real Estate Radio Live. I'll be back with you to continue in just a couple minutes. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Cochera of Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We are your go-to resource for all aspects of real estate, including buying, selling, refinancing, building, and legal and tax advice, and much more. You can subscribe to Real Estate Radio Live podcast on iTunes and Stitcher to listen to an engaging discussion about anything and everything real estate. So make sure you get our app, RE Radio Live, in the iTunes store to follow the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Cochera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Joe Cochera with Real Estate Radio Live. The topic today are my predictions uh, for the real estate and mortgage industry in 2018. I am moving through those. I'm finishing up on the real estate side and now moving to the mortgage. Be sure uh, to download the podcast. If you're listening to this uh, via podcast, great. Continue to do so. Pass along. Share it with your friends, family, coworkers. Uh, we've had tremendous amount of growth in the podcast side and love to continue to accelerate that growth because that just means more people are listening and hopefully more people are learning and educating themselves. So back to the predictions of... Um, 2018, I'll just wrap up the, the real estate side as I, <clears throat> excuse me, as I finished the second segment, I was saying that the danger the industry has is that you have an accelerated learning curve with the consumer and uh, decelerating. So you have the industry moving the other direction. They're flat and stagnant. They're paralyzed. The, the, the problem with that is 
the consumer is becoming more educated and accelerated learning curve. So what's going to happen? So my prediction for next year, even more so than now, if you and in your industry, in our industry, when I say our industry, real estate financing and real estate in general, real estate agent, mortgage people, title people, more and more pressure is going to become under the fees and the costs that we charge. The fees associated that we charge to do business are going to be are going to continue to come under pressure. What does that mean? That mean that means is we're going to be forced to compete even more. Even more. It's going to be even more competitive for a couple different reasons and this is my prediction. Number 1, again, you have a more educated consumer, he or she is going to be out there ready to do battle with you and they're going to know a lot more than than they did a year ago. Number 2, you still have a market that's it, that is very slow. You don't have enough transactions to go around. So you have more and more people fighting for less and less business. For those two reasons right there, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be even a more highly competitive business next year. So hold on and watch for that. All right, so let me jump on the mortgage side now. Um, so let's let's start with interest rates. I do believe interest rates will be up next year. When I say up, I do believe that we're going to be probably right around the 4.5% range. Right now, we're still hovering around 4%, maybe a little below 4%, depending on the market. So I do see interest rates up about a half a percent next year, roughly. Could they go up a little bit more? Sure. Could they stay down? Yes. But I, as on average, I would say look for them to come up about a half percent next year. The Fed's going to be raising the prime at least a couple of times next year. Even though that doesn't have a direct effect, it does have an effect on the long-term mortgage rates. So I do see interest rates creeping up, and I do see them about a half percent higher at least by this time next year or, or over the next six to eight months. Mortgage rates up. What's that mean? Um, again, if you should are considering to refinance, I would do it sooner than later. Don't wait. The big mystery also, ladies and gentlemen, prediction for 2018, um, be aware of your home equity lines. If you've been listening to my show for the last year, you know I've been a big advocate of consolidating equity lines um, because as rates go up, so will home equity lines. And when those things recast, you're going to have an accelerated payment on those things. So I've been advocating for the last year for people to consolidate. If you have home equity lines and you don't have any intention to pay them down, look at combining them with the first. And I'll real quickly remind people, when some people will automatically say, when, they, when I, they hear me say that, they say, Joe, I don't want to do that. I have a rate of three and three quarters. Well, great. That's great. But that rate of three and three quarters is not going to do you much when you have a $200,000 equity line <clears throat> that you're paying five and a half, six, seven percent on a year or so from now if you're not careful. So then all of a sudden it's not that attractive, that three and three quarters interest rate. My point is, if you do it in the near future, you could still consolidate those loans and potentially stay at 4% or just under 4%. So yeah, collectively on the money you have now, you might be paying a little higher interest rate, but collectively, if you combine those loans, your blended rate is going to be so much lower and you're going to save a lot of money. So keep an eye on that. Not only that, but with the new tax laws, equity lines that are um, newly opened, my understanding, I'll get more details next week or so, but my understanding is that they're no longer tax deductible, deductible the interest on equity lines. If, if, if you just opened them up after here, right after December 15th or towards the end of the year. And we're going to get some more clarity on that, so don't hold me to that. But that's my understanding is that, you know, if you have an existing one, and let's say you have a loan on your property of 500000 on a first and a $200,000 second, and you have that equity line prior to December 15th, then you're still going to get 100% of your, of your interest write-off on those combined loans, right? My understanding, though, if today you have a $500,000 first and you open a brand new equity line of 200000 and you use that equity line, you may not be able to, to deduct the interest off that equity line after the first of the year. It doesn't matter what your total combined loan amounts are. Now, not a CPA, not an expert. We're still trying to define all these new tax laws that are coming out. But be careful with that. And I would suggest talking to your CPA before you make any moves of that nature. So that's another thing to be careful of prediction for 2018. 
Similar to the real estate industry, the mortgage industry, I also feel like it's going to go through a consolidation period in 2018. The reason is very similar. There's not enough business to go around with all the mortgage bankers and banks and brokers that are out there. There just isn't. So I think there's going to be more and more consolidation. And I think companies are going to be leaning towards and going to be trying to figure out how they could invest in technology and customer care in the next couple of years. And it's going to be tough. I know our industry doesn't like to do it, but I'm telling you, we have missed the boat. There, is a, there are a lot of companies that are spending a lot of money to come up with better solutions to process loans, to close loans. On the mortgage side, the same thing I said about real estate, <clears throat> the same thing is happening. If you're in the mortgage company, or I'm sorry, if you're in the mortgage industry and you're not investing a fair amount of money in technology and to a ways to improve customer care in which the which you process that loan, you're going to be doomed for failure eventually because the competition will pass you up. They'll pass you up. And what's interesting to me is, you know who the biggest, <laughs> this is funny, 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 not funny for the consumers. They're probably pissed. But you know who's the worst at technology? The, the major lenders, Wells Fargo, Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, they're the absolute worst when it comes to customer care and investing in technology. The worst. The ones like New American Funding, and I'm not saying it just because I'm with them, a company that's that's on a strong growth pattern, but is more is independent still and entrepreneurial, and they make decisions based on customer care and not um, shareholders. Investing a lot of money in technology systems to speed up the loan flow for processing, better, communi better communication to consumers during the loan process. All those things are important. And if you're not a company that's on that track investing in that, it's going to be problematic for those in the mortgage industry for sure. So that's another prediction for 2018 on the mortgage side. If you're listening to this and you're in the mortgage industry, I would be careful who you're working with. And if the company you're currently with is not competing in technology and not competing in the way they process loans, then be careful because you're going to continue to lose market share. You just will. Overall, as a summary, ladies and gentlemen, this won't surprise most people's Bay Area, but this is the part that a lot of industries don't get. What is technology spo supposed to do? I'll throw that question out, and then I'll answer it myself. <clears throat> what are the expectations of technology in general? Like if you asked an expert or consumer or anybody else, what would you say if you said, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you had a panel and you had a focus group. What are the expectations for technology? What's technology supposed to do overall? People might think about it, have some different you know, answers, but I could tell you what, it, what most of them will say. Quicker, right? <clears throat> faster, cheaper. Simpler, faster, cheaper. Simpler, faster, cheaper. Simpler, faster, cheaper. Now, you might use some different words, but the idea of what technology is supposed to do is it's supposed to improve the processes no matter what you do, right? It's supposed to simplify things. In other words, and if you have 10 steps now, maybe you could get it down to five with better technology. You're supposed to simplify things. You're supposed to allow them to go quicker. You're supposed to get them done quicker, right? And what's the other thing? What is the big three? The big three is savings and cost. It's supposed to be cheaper. You're supposed to save money and that's to the consumer and to the business, ladies and gentlemen. So as a business, what should you be doing? If you're investing in technology, your consumer's expectations are there. It's going to be simpler, faster, cheaper. So if you're not investing to achieve those goals, you're going to lose market share and you're going to be, it's going to be problematic for companies in the near future. It just is. All right, I'm going to take my last break. I'm going to come back. I'm going to finish up with the mortgage predictions for 2018. 
you have any questions, 1-800-516-1220. 1-800-516-1220. If you have any questions, I'll be back in just a couple minutes to finish up the live show. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. The world is changing and so is real estate. It's changing in ways that give consumers more control with more affordable options. So what are your options? Hi, this is Joe Cachera with Real Estate Radio Live. I've been on the air educating and informing consumers for over seven years now. I'm excited to announce that there is now a more efficient and cost-effective way to buy and sell real estate. Our team at Real Estate Radio Live is launching a new program designed to help buyers or sellers like you in real estate, lending, and title. That's right. We'll coordinate the entire transaction for you. So you benefit by working with the same team, saving time, and saving money. We'll guarantee you'll not only be working with the most qualified, hand-picked experts in real estate, lending, and title, but you will also save a significant amount of money in all three services as well. Act now and benefit from changing the world of real estate. Call 408-838-9060. Go to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Thank you for joining me this afternoon as we wind down the show. Today's topic are my predictions for the real estate and mortgage industry for 2018. Just uh, wrapping those up as we wrap up the end of the year and um, sharing those with you. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. Every single day we're streaming live on Facebook. And uh, also be sure to listen to us, uh, download the podcast at RE Radio Live, go to iTunes, Pass it along. This information will help you uh, now and in the future when you make decisions on your real estate. And that's our goal and objective. And we're excited for 2018. We have some big surprises coming for you, the consumer, 2018. Stay tuned in January and listen for the updates. You will be excited and surprised of what some of the stuff is we're going to be offering for you, the consumer, in many different ways. So stay tuned. All right, so let me finish up with the mortgage predictions for 2018. Real quick, I talked earlier about there's going to be higher interest rates. I think they're going to be up about a half a percent roughly. If you have a second, I would still look at consolidating that, although be careful because any new home equity lines now may not be tax deductible. So be really careful for opening up new equity line homes of credit. Before you do that, talk to your CPA, understand, understand what you're doing. There's going to be more consolidation in the mortgage industry and there's because there's fewer deals to go around for a lot of people. You're going to see big banks. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of layoffs with big banks next year. Keep an eye on B of A, Wells Fargo, City. Um, keep an eye on them. I do think uh, Chase, I think that all of them are going to have substantial layoffs sometime during next year. I just think they will. Um, there's going to be some changes and there's going to be some, some dynamics. The other thing I'll mention is, is uh, just like I did with real estate, consumers this time next year are becoming more and more educated. Every single year that goes by and consumers have more information and education at their fingertips, that puts more pressure on industries that offer products and services that don't keep pace with their consumers. And we don't keep pace. Our industry doesn't keep pace. Some of you are listening to this. Maybe your industry does. There's some high-tech companies, some industries that are doing a great job keeping pace with consumer uh, acceleration and education. We don't. Our mortgage and real estate industry does not keep pace. That's already starting to haunt us. It's going to get worse. The reason why it's taking a while, ladies and gentlemen, because they're huge industries, huge industries. The real estate agent, the National Association of Realtors, is a stronger lobbying body than the pharmaceutical industry. The mortgage industry is heavily regulated, 
heavily regulated. It might as well be a government agency. It's going to take a while to crack that code. It's going to take a while to start chipping away, but it's already happening. So this is the prediction I have for 2018. More and more, what does this mean when you have a more educated consumer faced with an industry that it's not keeping pace? So then more pressure is put on that industry for improved service, and they're going to drive down pricing. And so margins will shrink. Profits will shrink. So you better keep an eye on your overhead and how you operate a business in this industry in 2018 and 2019 because the commissions and the fees and the costs are going to come. They're going to, the fees and the commissions are going to come under pressure, more and more pressure in our industry. And what I mean by that is what we all make now, I'll bet you 10 to 1 on average, on average is an industry. And I know there could be maybe little pocket areas here and there that still escape it. But on average, in a competitive marketplace, I think we're going to lose somewhere between 8 to 10 percent of what most of us made in 2017 and 2018. Purely, not because we're working any less. We might work even harder. It's because of the competition. It's because of the competition. You have mortgage companies like Quicken Loans and some others that don't have any brick and mortar. It's all call centers. That's all it is. So what does that mean to the consumer? Well, the problem with the call centers is that when you're in a stressful relationship or in a, in a transaction, I should say, and you're trying to close loans on time, talking to someone in Indianapolis or Florida is not a very comforting feeling. I could tell you it's not, even from a consumer perspective, my own, me buying my properties. It, it doesn't work. I want to work with someone locally. I want to be able to see them, talk to them, get a hold of them. So that's still a, a cause of concern for consumers, big transactions like that, just like it is on real estate. That's why it's not going to happen overnight. These consumers still want real estate agents. Consumers still want good loan officers. But here's the difference. Here is the difference. They are expecting more for less. They are expecting more for less. That's what's going to happen. And the reason for that is that there's more competition. So don't get me wrong. Consumers still want quality service. They want to be able to pick up the phone, look in your eyes. When, you're, when you have a home transaction, a financing transaction, you're buying real estate, that is an emotional transaction. They still want that care. They want the quality care. They do. The difference is, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to question you now more. Before, it's like, oh, what do you charge? Okay, let me. where do I sign? No, no, no. No, it's not the way it's going to work anymore. Now it's they're going to negotiate. They're going to say, well, what about this? And what about that? And how come you're charging me this fee? And shouldn't you be able to reduce that? I'm just, I'm a realist. I'm telling you this is what's going to start happening more and more because of the educated consumer. All right, unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, I want to thank all those for tuning in today. Thank you so much for tuning in on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in on the radio. Thank you for tuning in online. Be sure to go download the podcast. Go to iTunes, type in Real Estate Radio Live, or go to re radiolive.com. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live with you five days a week. Take care. Have a great evening. We'll be back with you tomorrow. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Tune in, log in, download our podcast, discover more at reradiolive.com. reradiolive.com.